This video accompanies the discussion of summarization and visualization techniques for considering categorical data in open interest statistics. We will begin by being introduced to contingency tables and bar plots, and then learn about row and column proportions. And towards the end of the video, we will consider a few approaches for comparing numerical data across groups. Data from 3,921 emails were collected and included information about whether the email is spam and whether it included no number, a small number, or a large number within the email. In this table, we can see a few lines from this data set. We can see the first column reports whether an individual email is spam. The next three columns contain information about the number of characters in the email, the number of line breaks, and the format. Lastly, we see information about what type of number, if any, was included in the email. We are interested in exploring relationships in the email dataset, and contingency tables can be a very helpful tool in this context, because contingency tables summarize data for two categorical variables. Contingency tables like this one provide considerable information. For example, by looking at the interior cells, we can see the number of emails satisfying a particular level in each categorical variable. Here, the table shows that there were 2,659 emails that contained a small number and were not spam. Shifting our attention to the margins, we can see the count for all emails with a particular level for just one of the categorical variables. For example, there were 367 emails marked as spam in this dataset. Notice this sums up the numbers for each email marked as spam, regardless of whether it had no number, a small number, or a large number. Finally, we can see the total number of observations in the lower right-hand corner of the contingency table. It's 3,921. In contrast to contingency tables, which compare two categorical variables, a table for a single variable is called a frequency table. You can see the frequency table shown here provides the counts for all three levels of the number variable. This information is identical to the bottom margin of the contingency table we just saw. A bar plot is a common way to visualize a single categorical variable. The bar plot on the left uses count for the vertical axis, so we can tell exactly how many emails from our dataset fall into each level. The bar plot on the right displays this information as a proportion of the total number of emails. Before moving on, it's interesting to note that we can continue one step further with summarization via contingency tables. One way is by calculating row and column proportions. For example, row proportions are computed as the cell counts divided by their row totals. In calculating row proportions, the right-hand margin will always be 1, and the cell values will be the proportion of the row that belongs to each individual level. Looking at a table with row proportions calculated, here we can see 40.6% of spam emails contained no numbers, while only 11.3% of non-spam emails contained no numbers. Some of the more interesting investigations can be considered by examining numerical data across groups. Below we see side-by-side -side box plots and hollow histograms. These data investigate two variables in a dataset about U.S. counties. The first variable, median income, is continuous, and the second variable, change in population, is categorical, measured as a gain or no gain. The figures show that median income was generally higher in counties that experienced population gain, shown in blue, compared to counties that did not experience population gain, shown in red. In this video, we explored summarization and visualization techniques for categorical data, including contingency tables, bar plots, and approaches for comparing numerical data across groups. If you learned something you found interesting, Share this video with a friend and visit openintro.org for more resources.